Hi everyone, welcome back and this is uh, the last video as part of my uh, my uh, fan tour of Python Esperanto library. I am a super fan of this library, especially for image segmentation type of tasks. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can segment 3D datasets. And I have a test dataset here. And unfortunately, this cool video that I thought would be playing on the screen is not playing as part of my PowerPoint presentation. It's failing me today, the PowerPoint, but again, we'll see this live anyway, so don't worry about it. The plan is to take a 3D data set and segment the objects. Okay, let's jump into the code. And I'm going to use Pyke Lesperanto library, like I already mentioned, and this is a, a uh, you can find it on GitHub. I'll leave the link as part of the description and also as part of the code I'm going to share with you. Okay, now let me open my code. And let's go line by line. First of all, what type of data set am I working with? Uh, 3D data sets can come in uh, uh, many, many, many file type of file formats. And of course, uh, if you have a TIFF stack, a Z stack of a, a bunch of TIFF images, that also works fine. I am going to work with a .czi image, nothing special in this case. It's just a Zeiss uh, image that is uh, uh, showing me a Z stack right there, you see? So I'm moving the Z positions right here. You can open this even in image J if you want, yeah? And uh, uh, if you want to watch this in 3D, I mean, I'm using the Zen software because I have access to it. Oh, I have to calibrate this uh, uh, pixels in here, but this is, uh, you see, if I go to info, I think the pixel calibration didn't go through pretty well. It says uh, 0.124 microns, 0.124 by one micron. I did a mistake in encoding it, but that should not stop us from doing anything that I plan on showing. All I need to do is change the pixel uh, pixel size right there and which is easy in this software or also in image J but let's not focus on that let's just look at our image and this is our image right there and our goal is to segment these individual objects in 3D okay so again this is a couple of lines in Pyke Esperanto so I am showing you many examples of Pyke Esperanto so you get motivated to using this library and uh, uh, working on your own data sets okay this is going to be the last example like I mentioned so let's start by importing our libraries, matplotlib, numpy, and czi file. Uh, you don't have to import czi file. If, you're, if your image is in TIFF stack, then obviously you'll be working with TIFF file or uh, some other library. Scikit image can handle uh, 3D TIFF stacks, and I believe it uses TIFF file in the backend. I'm going to open my image. And my input image has a dimensions of 1 by 1 by 129 by 308 by 361 by 1. What does that mean? Well, it has 129 different images uh, in Z. 308 by 461 is the dimensions uh, uh, right there of my, in X and Y. I only care about a few of those. So I am only selecting the 129Z uh, stack and 308 by 461. And let's import our Pyke Lesperanto library. And uh, let's also select our device, uh, GPU device, because this is 3D, so we may benefit from that. And let's push our image into Lesperanto right there. If you think I'm going too fast, you don't, nothing makes sense. I already talked about this in the last couple of videos, and I don't want to bore my regular uh, viewers with all the additional details, but you can always go back to my videos number 274, 75, and 76, the three videos before this to get more information in case you feel like you have a gap in your knowledge, understanding after after this. Okay, this part is basically for plotting purposes, so you don't need to do it, but I just want to show you the image in X and Y. You see from one dimension, it looks like this. Another way, uh, X. think of this as X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z directions. Okay, this is how it looks like and uh, it's oversaturated, could be better, but anyway, let's not worry about that. And if you do not have isotropic pixels, like uh, uh, in my case, I'm not reading the metadata, but if you uh, do not have isotropic pixels or if you need to perform background corrections, again, go to this Pyke Lesperanto library to get uh, more details in terms of how to do that. But for now, let's uh, stick with uh, the basics. So first thing first, uh, we, it's single line. Segmentation, believe it or not, is just single line task. Voronoi Otsu labeling. This is what we are using. Okay. And for that, we are applying that onto our input GPU image. 
with a spot sigma of 13 and outline sigma of 1. What the heck do they mean? Again, if you go back a couple of videos, I talked about how you need to Gaussian blur your image so you can find the centers of each of these regions or objects. And once you find the center, you need to divide this Voronoi. In this example, it's doing in uh, three dimensions. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's it. Once it's uh, segmented, we just show the result. So let us go ahead and do this. After all that discussion, it's just a couple of lines. This is the beauty of this. Look how amazing this segmentation is. This is in 3D. Now we are seeing X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, whatever uh, the axes are. As simple as that. You have a 3D data set, apply Voronoi also labeling, you have a segmented image. There you go. And now let me pull that from my Clasperanto into a NumPy array so I can do a couple of things. So. I'm doing that, and now once I pull that, I can write that as a segmented image.tiff, in which case it writes my Z stack, a TIFF stack. So I should have it as part of my right there, segmented underscore uh, image right there. And if I open it in image J, for example, you should see if I slide this, there you go. Each object again is given a pixel value of whatever the object number is. This is probably one. Well, it is one, two, three, four. This one is probably four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. Yeah. So you get the idea. Uh, if you want to visualize these in image J uh, in 3D, you should go to plugins, 3D viewer, and we'll just do volume, which is fine. You can do surface rendering, volume, ortho slice, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and convert that into 8 bit. There you go. Segmented image. Isn't that cool? Now, let us do a couple other tricks. Like I like to save them as OME TIFF file format. If you want to especially embed your metadata and keep the pixel size information and everything. But uh, to do that, you can use a peer OME TIFF library. Go ahead and Google search for that. This is uh, something from, uh, uh, this is from the Zeiss Appear team. So let's go ahead and use that. And I'm just expanding the dimensions because to write an OME TIFF file, by the way, uh, image J can actually you import and also write OME TIFF files using bioformats. But to write this, the way it's written is the first dimension is, uh, uh, is uh, time. The next one is your Z stacks. The next one is your number of channels. In this case, we only have one channel and then X and Y. Uh, so we are we are saving this five dimension images. If you save it in TIFF file, standard TIFF file, it's only three dimensions, right? X, Y, and Z. That's it. You don't have the luxury of all of these. That's exactly what I'm trying to do here. If it's a multi-dimensional data, so to get to that, I'm doing all these tricks: expand the dimensions, swap the axes because I want my Z to be here, and so on. And uh, also, I'm changing the type of my uh, data into int eight and I am uh, saving it right there. So let's go ahead and save it dot into OEMITIF file format. Hopefully I should see it right there. Yeah, OEMITIF. How do you open it? You can open it in image J if you want. You can download image J. Just Google search for image J if you don't know what I'm talking about and you should see the segmentation. If you don't see the segmentation, that probably means the range is not correct. So adjust the range to auto or you can set the range and there you go. A beautiful way of visualizing is having a professional software, for example, like uh, like uh, Zen, or you can try Napari. Napari is great. It, I don't wanna get into that discussion. That's a whole lot of different series by itself, uh, but uh, let, us, uh, let us do best fit right there. And there you go. In Zen, it looks super duper amazing and I can change the colors too. Let's do, let's do identity. I like that because we have individual objects. Let's do that. Separate colors, visualize in 3D and you have your objects right here. Okay, so there you go. We went all the way from having a just a 3D TIFF image to all these type of colorful renderings and visualizations in no time with, the, with, with just a single line of code that does this amazing 3D segmentation. So please explore the PyClass Parento library. You see great examples right there, a very, very powerful tool that is free. 
So go ahead and uh, explore this again. Come back to this channel, subscribe to this channel. If you want more content like this, hit the like button that tells me that you like that type of content. So let's meet again in the next video, guys. Thank you.